Again, welcome to pre calculus Mathematics 164. This lecture cover algebraic fractions. So again, to evaluate certain limits and also graphing rational functions require us to understand algebraic fractions. For example, if we have six divided by eight, we can reduce it to three divided by four because uh, six divided by two and also eight divided by two, the remainder is zero. So two is divisible by six and eight. Same to applies to this equation here. If we have x plus two times x plus one divided by x plus one times x plus three. Now, since we have x plus one at the numerator and also we have x plus one at the denominator and they are multiplying the next binomial, again, we can cancel both of them. So the s plus one at the numerator will cancel the s plus one at the denominator. So we can reduce the fraction to be s plus two divided by s plus three. Now here we say by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by s plus one, only if s is not equal to negative one, because if s is equal to negative one, we are going to get zero at the denominator. And we know any value divided by zero, there's no answer. Now, simplify fractions. Here we say we can simplify algebraic fractions by harder factoring the numerator and the denominator, and then dividing both the numerator and the de denominator by any common factors. So for example, here we're going to start with the product of functions. <clears throat> so for example, if we have four fifth multiplied by 10 by 12, multiplied by two by five, again, here we have three different fractions. They are multiplied. So here we say we can multiply all the numerators together and multiply everything the denominator. Also, we can cancel if we like. For example, we can say two can go into two is one, two can go into 12 is six. Five can go into five is one, five can go into 10 is two. Then we multiply. Or here we say four times 10 times two will give us 80. Then five times 12 times five will give us 300. Then we can also reduce it. So for example, here we can cancel the zero out. We get A divided by 30. Now A divided by 30, we know two can go into eight is four. Two can go into 30 is 15. So again, we can always find the product of all the fractions, then we reduce the fractions to the lowest terms. So this is the example again, instead of multiply all the, the previous example, we multiply all the numerators together, then multiply all the denominator, then we reduce it. Another option, we can start to reduce it earlier. So for example here, we said five can go into 10. So five can go into five is one. And we know five can go into 10 is two. Then we also said four can go into four is one. Four can go into 12 is three. So now we have one times two times two. And then one times three times five. So that will give us four fifteen. Again, we get the same answer, but I would prefer this because by reducing the fraction before multiplication, we deal with lower values. So next will be the product of fractions. Now here also we said we can multiply algebraic fractions by writing the product of the numerators divided by the product of the denominators, then reduce to the lowest term. Or we may also reduce prior to finding the product. Same thing as the previous question. So again, in arithmetic, we learn to divide one fraction by another fraction by inverting the divisor and then multiply. So what we mean is that if I have a s square b divided by c and is dividing a b by c square, we can change the division by inverting a b divided by c square. So in this case, we will get a square b divided 
by C, multiply by C squared divided by AB. So let's see the result. So this is A squared B divided by C, then all divided by AB by C squared. So we change the division sign to multiplication by inverting the fraction that follows after the division sign, which will be AB divided by C squared now becomes C squared over AB. Then if we like, we can cancel first. So for example, A will go into A squared is A, B will cancel B, C will go into C squared is C. Or we can do multiplication first also. So here we decided again to cancel. So our final answer again will be AC because C will be canceled. The denominator, we are going to remove one C. So left with one C at the top, the numerator. B is only one, so we cancel all the Bs at the numerator and the denominator. But A square is numerator and A is denominator, so it remain A. So our answer will be only A and C. Now let's check the next question. So the same thing applied to this question. We have 6S squared minus 6 divided by S squared plus 3S plus 2 and also divided by S minus 1 divided by S squared plus 4S plus 4. So the first thing we change the, the middle division sign to multiplication. So we still get 6S squared minus 6 by S squared plus 3S plus 2. Now instead of division, we have multiplication then we invert or find the reciprocal of this fraction. So now S squared plus 4S plus 4 will be a numerator, then S minus 1 will be the denominator. Then from here, we can see if we can be able to cancel. Now, when we get something like this, we will see if we can be able to factorize the expression before we cancel, since they are all not the same. So what we did is that we were able to factorize 6S squared minus 6, uh, six is common, we have S squared minus one. But S squared minus one is a difference of two squared. So S squared minus one will give us S minus one times S plus one. So six S squared minus six, if we factorize it, we get six, which is common. Then S minus one times S plus one. Because it, after we take six out, it will be left with S squared minus one. S squared minus one squared is difference difference of two squares. Now let's, let's, let's give us a perfect square because two times two give me four. Two plus two is also four and it's plus plus. So we get S plus two times S plus two. Now S minus one is already in the lowest term. We can't do anything. But here also we can factorize. Two times one is two. Two plus one is three. Everything is positive. So we get S plus two times s plus 1. So from here, we can cancel. s plus 1 will cancel. s plus 1, s plus 2 will cancel. Then s minus 1 also will cancel each other. So finally, we will left with only 6, s plus 2. Because s minus 1 will cancel. s minus 1. s plus 2 will cancel. s plus 2. Another s plus 1 will cancel. s plus 1. So all the three denominator terms all will be canceled. Then here also we are going to, at the top, we are going to cancel the three denominators, uh, three numerators. So it will left to totally one S plus two because we cancel one S plus two, then S plus one, then S minus one. Now let's see the addition and subtraction of fractions. Now with addition and subtraction of fractions, we always have to find the least common denominator. So for example, how do we find the least common denominator? Let's say, for example, we have one over S squared minus X and one over S squared minus one and one over S squared. They say we should find the least common denominator. The least common denominator will be the term that if we divide that term by S squared minus X and also S squared minus one and also S squared, then the remainder will be zero. And the value will be either one or more. So here we say the factor denominator will be First of all, we factorize S minus S give us S times S minus one. Then S squared minus one is a difference of two squares. So we get S plus one, S minus one. Then S squared is the same as writing S times X. So by looking here, we can see that the common or the least common denominator will be X minus one 
then s plus one, then x. So we have x, s minus one, s plus one. Here we identify the different factors that appear and the factors will appear only once, not more than once. Next, we say the LCD always is the product of these different factors with each factor use the maximum number of times it occurs in only one term. So which means we are going to multiply all these three terms. So we get S times X and X minus one and then S plus two. So when we multiply everything, we get S squared, S minus one times S plus one. So let's see an example here. So we have y minus three divided by y minus five plus y minus 23 divided by y squared minus y minus 20. So here we need to find the LCD because this is, again, when we are doing multiplication or division, we don't need to find the LCD because we can start to cancel or change the division sign to multiplication, multiply all the numerators, multiply all the denominators and cancel. Or we can start to cancel first. When I say cancel, I mean to reduce the terms first before multiplication. But when we are doing addition subtraction, we need to combine the terms. So that's why we find LCD. So you have y minus five, y squared minus y minus 20. What we will do is that we'll factorize it. So for example, y squared minus y minus 20 will give me y minus five times y plus four because minus five times four will give me minus 20 and minus four plus four will give me minus one, which is minus y. So we know now here y minus five is already in the lowest term. So we leave that as it is. So this means our SCD will be, since we have y minus five already in this term, our SCD will be y minus five times y plus four which is the same as y squared minus y minus 20. And that's what we saw there. CD is y minus five and y plus four because y minus five is already inside y squared minus y minus 20. So we write a term down and we see if we, we can cancel y minus, first of all, we have to combine. But again, the goal here is that we can see that the denominator are the same now y minus five, y plus four, y minus five, then y plus, this should be four. The denominator have to be the same. Then we can combine the top. So we multiply y minus three times y plus four, and that gives us y squared minus a plus y minus 12. Then we add it to y minus 23. Then these two terms, we take only one. So we take y minus five, y plus four. Then here we combine the like terms, which is y, y, they will cancel each other. I mean, plus y plus y will give me two y minus 12 minus 23 will give me minus 35 y squared. Then we will see if we can factorize the top. We were able because seven times negative five will give me negative 35. Seven minus five will give me positive two. Okay, so we have y plus seven, y minus five divided by y minus five, y plus four. So y minus five will cancel each other. We have one at the numerator, we have one at the denominator. So our final answer will be y plus seven divided by y plus four. Next, we're going to Compressed fractions. Now a compressed fraction means we have uh, a lot of terms multiplied by each other or divided. So for example, here we have one third plus four by X divided by three minus one over X, Y. So the first thing we can do as we all know, let's try and change this division sign to multiplication. Then we're going to find the LCD to combine one third and four by X. We also can find the LCD to combine three minus one over x, y. So we simplify the equation and this is what we get here. So we x to the power negative three plus s square 
uh, y to the power negative three all over xy to the power negative negative two. So that's it again here. One over x to the power three is the same as writing s to the power negative three. Then s square, we want y to be at the top. So we change the positive to negative. If it's negative, we change it to positive. So that's why we have this. Now, one over s y all square, we can move it up by changing the positive exponent to negative. So from here, we can be able to solve this question. So the first thing we're going to do is to find the LCD. Here we say the LCD will be S cube and also Y cube. So we use the S cube, Y cube, one over S square, Y square. The reason why we change it back so that again, the exponent will be positive and it will be more easy. Then we use the same s cube y cube, uh, s cube y cube to multiply the numerator also. So our final answer after we multiply, we get y cube plus s to the power fifth over s y. Because what will happen is that s cube divided by s square is left with only one x at the top numerator y cube divided by y square, it will left it only y at the top. So that's why we have xy. Because one over s square, y square times s cube, y cube is the same as saying s cube, y cube divided by s square, y square. So we cancel the two and three. Uh, three minus two, three minus two is one, one. So we get sy. Now the same thing we have to do here. So we will take s cube y cube divided by s cube. So the s cube will cancel each other. So it left with only y cube. Then next we have s cube y cube s square divided by y cube. So y cube also will cancel y cube. Then s square multiplied by s cube will give me s to the power fifth. So this will be our final result. We can also rationalize the denominators. Rationalize the denominators means we want to remove the radical sign at the denominator. So for example, if I have one over square root of S minus two, my goal is to remove the square root sign. Same thing applied to B, three plus square root of X divided by square root of X plus square root of five. The goal is to remove the denominator. To rationalize the denominator means to remove the root sign, in this case, it will be square root from the denominator. So let's do the first one. Here we said that since I have S uh, square root of S minus two, how can I remove the square root sign? I will multiply it by another square root X because we know uh, square root is the same as one over two, half, exponent half. So in order to remove exponent half, I have to multiply half by two. So that's why we multiply square root of S minus two by square root of X plus two. So we get difference of two squares. So we're going to get the square root of X all square minus two square. So let's see if we get the answer. So that's what we have here. We can see square root of X square minus two square. So our answer will be square root of s plus two over s minus four. This will be the final answer because the question said we should only rationalize the denominator. So we have to remove the square root signs from the denominator. Same thing applied to the B question. We have three plus square root of x over square root of s plus five. So here we have plus five. I want difference of two squares so that I can square square root of x and I can square square root of five, and that will give me S plus five. In order to do that, we use the difference of square two squares formula. If I have square root of S plus square root of five, multiply by square root of S minus square root of five, that will give me X minus five, or we say square root of S square minus five uh, square root of five square. Now square root and square, they cancel each other. So we have S minus five. 
Then at the top, we do the same thing. Remember here, we have multiplication. So we are going to multiply S plus square root of X times square root of S minus square root of five. So that will give us square root of X times three minus three square root of five plus X minus square root of five X. So that will be the conclusion of this lecture. So again, this lecture, uh, we learn the concept of, again, algebraic fractions, how to find fractions. So this rule applies to simple fractions also. But here we may have some function or algebraic uh, algebra functions. But we know a fraction of multiplication, we can multiply the denominators together and also multiply the denominators together. Then we can reduce the answer. Or we can cancel first before we multiply. Division means we have to change the division sign to multiplication first. Then addition and subtraction means we have to find the LCD first to combine the terms. So again, wish everybody the best and thank you.